it's been two weeks since my last update. Uh, last weekend, my parents came up to visit. It was really good to see them. Um, but, you know, I gave them a tour of the garden and then I completely forgot to do my weekly vlog. So here's a belated second week update of the garden. Um, I'm going to show you both the front yard and the backyard as well as um, some of the stuff I have inside because I did have to harvest some stuff um, that I really wanted to have in this video. So here we go. Now I had to harvest this this morning but uh, because a critter got into one of them little brats. Um, but look at this. My beautiful eggplants from the front yard. They're just small. These are called fairy tale eggplants. And um, they're not supposed to grow more than three to six inches long. Um, and so they say your finger, you know, each joint of your finger is about an inch. So they're probably about the right size. So I don't feel like I'm getting cheated at all. And I really can't wait to try them in a recipe. I'm part of this international cooking group where we pick a theme each week. And this week, this coming week is going to be Thai food, and so I'm looking forward to having this in a Thai curry dish. So normally this would be a bad thing, but this is actually a good thing that my potato plants are dying. Um, this is a sign that in the next week or two I should be able to harvest the potatoes in here. This one has already fully died back and dried up, so I could probably harvest it, but this one isn't quite ready to go, so I'm going to wait till the whole bag's worth of plants is done and ready to be harvested. Plus, it rained a lot this week and you really, you know, want to wait a few days before you harvest to give the ground time to dry. So we'll just see what happens. I've got a second batch of herbs going, dill and cilantro, and um, I find that if I just, is that a slug on here? No. I find that if I just, um, keep planting them, they do go to seed quite fast, but I do end up getting, you know, a week or two, maybe two, three weeks out of it so far, um, before it going to seed. So it's been really helpful in all the Asian recipes I've made and stuff to not have to go out and buy, um, cilantro and the dill is just so great with just about every recipe. My red sales lettuce there is getting pretty tall and it's probably about to bolt, i.e. go to seed. So I'm going to um, harvest most of it today. So one of the plants was already turning bitter yesterday when I made my sandwiches. Um, but also, last night I planted, you can't see them because I just planted it last night, but I planted what's called Paradise Island lettuce. No idea what that is. I think it's sort of um, a tall, sort of romaine looking lettuce. So I planted four of them. Uh, here and we'll see what happens and you know this arugula just won't die it needs to die so that I can harvest seeds so I can replant arugula and it just it keeps flowering I'm getting quite frustrated uh, if you have tips on whether it's okay to harvest them now or to fully wait till they dry for the seeds to be viable let me know tell me what you think kill continues to persist despite the worms eating it. Um, I catch the worms every once in a while, but you know, it's the heat of summer. You can only keep up so much with the bugs. And um, I just try to find the leaves that have the least amount of damage and clean them real well before I uh, use them. I have found worms on them once I've harvested them. So yeah, cleaning your veggies is essential when you have it all natural with no chemicals. The raspberry or the bramble patch uh, is kind of gone crazy. The raspberries over here, this plant has kind of taken over this half, and that side is leaning over that half. But I want to show you, look, I have baby raspberries growing. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to touch the plant because it's got pricklies, but yeah, that's awesome. Cannot wait to have them from this type. That type has already given us some, a small batch this year. Um, and it looks like the time of year I need to Harness the stuff along the fence as well. There's always a to-do list in the summer. And the fence line needs to be uh, cleaned up a little bit, I think. My dragon bush beans, which are supposed to be bush beans, but it turns out they really do like to trellis a little bit, um, are doing pretty well. They're two or three weeks in the ground. So I'm hoping we'll have flowers soon and then we'll have uh, beans soon. And down here we have the little 
Merlu lettuce, which is supposed to be red leafed lettuce. You can kind of see it there. Um, I haven't started harvesting them yet. Um, probably will in the next week or two once the, you know, the other lettuce I just showed you bolts. Then I'll start going to this one. And my plan for the rest of this is I've, I've got a lot of beans on these plants right now. You can see a whole bunch right there, right? There's beans all over this. So I'm going to harvest the last batch of beans from these guys, pull them up and put more dragon. And I'm just going to fill up this whole bed with dragon bush beans. I think it'll be just really delicious and I can't wait to have a big batch to cook up. The last thing I want to show you in the backyard is this is where I had all the bachelor's buttons. You can still see some remnants of the little ones here. But the Cleome, you remember the Cleome I have in the front yard? I had planted some around the same time as the bachelor's buttons and they're finally starting to bloom here. I guess the bachelor's buttons have died back enough for the plants to get um, lots of sun and so we're gonna have some beautiful cleome blooms in the backyard in the next week or two so i don't talk too often about the wild um, plants in the yard that grow naturally that are native to the area but this is wood sorrel and i think it's just so pretty in the crook of this tree and wood sorrel sorrel it looks kind of like clover but it's not and the way you know it's not is clover leaves do not have the heart shaped leaf you see that there these leaves are heart shaped and it's edible. It's totally edible. And because it's over here, I know the dogs haven't eaten it. So I'm gonna have a bite. This stuff is so good. It's a little bit bitter, a little bit citrusy. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just delicious. Mmm. Mmm. Very bitter. Um, I typically put it in salads or um, I'll just come out here and eat it raw. So first of all, the tomatoes are, are huge. They are doing really good. You can see over here there's one ripening, but I will uh, show you another one in the other um, garden bed. You can see some red ones coming in here. I've been harvesting pretty consistently one to two tomatoes a day from the garden. They're just doing really well. And um, we have some baby blackberries growing. Really looking forward to tasting those if the squirrels don't get to them first, which they just might because they're lo low to the ground and uh, the squirrels, yeah, the squirrels really like everything. So I'm about to harvest these two. They're split because it's rained so much, but they're really beautiful. And because they're split, bugs can get in them. So oh, let me harvest this with one hand instead of two. There we go. It's nice and soft. I think it'll be delicious. We'll put it uh, in the windowsill for a day or two so it can get a little bit more ripe, but it's probably a day away from it. And you know, I just cut around this part. You don't really notice it when you go to eat it. It's usually fine. Is that a bug getting in that one? No, I think it's all right. One of my observations this year growing herbs is that holy basil will grow rapidly and it was choking out the regular basil that I also like to have um, and so uh, I had to cut it back some to make sure the regular basil got some sun. But just look how full of tomatoes my plants are. They're starting to get big, starting to turn, they're just looking lovely and yeah I harvest one or two from this section over here every day of the cherry tomatoes. They're really delicious. The tomatoes inside of the green fence are also doing really well. They're beautiful. They are getting cracking around the top, you can see there, but um, they're just, I mean, they're pretty huge, pretty massive. This one's probably about, has it started turning? Not quite yet, it's about to turn. This is the Cherokee purple, um, and the striped ones are the zebra tomatoes. The fish peppers are coming along nicely. I had a couple in a, in a dish the other day, um, and they definitely have a little bit of spice to them. I harvested a couple of jalapenos already, but we got another one that's probably going to be ready to harvest in a day or two. Um, they're not growing very fast, and they're not very prolific, but they're doing okay. Um, the cucumber plants continue to be a big disappointment, and I think um, I think they're just not really meant to grow in uh, containers. So I'm probably not going to do that next year I'm, or next season. Um, my acorn squash plant 
is doing pretty good. It's probably going to be ready to harvest soon. I don't know the exact timing, but I'm watching it closely for when it gets to trademark yellow spot on the bottom. But look at this. Oh, there is a squash bug on this plant and I'm going to get it. I will be right back. Crap, well he escaped. But yeah, look at this beautiful, beautiful coxcomb flower. They have lots of little side shoots of flowers. But I just think they're so, so pretty. My velvet brains, yes, yes, yes. So pretty. Cleomes continue to grow. They're now probably two to three feet taller than me. Um, and these guys are also doing really well, my zinnias. They're mostly pink, but uh, yeah, the flower garden's doing pretty good overall. And my lima beans are growing really nicely. They're getting super, super bushy. I don't know how well you can tell that. And then another thing I'm really excited about is check this out. These are starting to turn colors. These are the Jimmy Nardello peppers, and they are supposed to turn bright red um, and it looks like they're starting to blush now. So hopefully in a week or two, we will have some Jimmy Nardello peppers to eat, which I am really, really looking forward to. The last thing I'm gonna leave you with is the bee balm. This is lemon bee balm. And I don't know if you can see the guy over there, but there is one, there's a bee over there. Where are you, little guy? There you are. There's a bee who's, oh, coming right at me. I swear, I'm not out to hurt you. Enjoy your meal, Mr. Bee. So there's bees. Oh, actually, I think that's a hornet. Well, no, that's a bee. I can't tell. But needless to say, the bugs love this thing. And it's just such a beautiful flower. Just such a beautiful flower. Look how pretty that is. Oh, yeah. And the coral coxcomb, which is actually quite short, is also turning out really beautifully. Here's a shot of some tomatoes ripening. These are the ones I just picked. But here's some more ripening. This one I just picked this morning. It's just getting a tiny bit of blush, but given the critters like to eat them early, I figured I'm not gonna take a risk. This will give you an idea of how beautiful the zebra tomatoes are. Look at these beautiful striped markings to them. And they really do have like a tangy, more citrusy, not citrusy, but they get this pretty yellow when they ripen to them that shows the marks much better. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've been having tomato sandwiches for breakfast every day of this week. And sometimes for lunch with cheese. So, it's been pretty nice. So now I'm going to leave you with a couple of notes for what I'm doing. Just so next year I can see, um, you know, this, this garden journal is for others. But it's also for me to keep a record of um, my progress and lessons learned. So I will say that I'm going to make an attempt starting today to plant out more of the fall crops. Um, I got, let me find the little packet. Ugh. My friend Megan sent me a little packet of kohlrabi seeds um, that I'm going to plant indoors and um, start indoors as seedlings because it's so hot outside. And then also red Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna start those indoors. Um, this was the lettuce this was the lettuce that I said I had planted in sets of four outside um, in the lettuce garden. And this is what the Merlot lettuce will look like. And I'm going to probably plant some more of that in the lettuce garden as well as arugula. And then I've also heard that you can do another batch of squash. Um, so I might try planting some of this in the front. I haven't quite decided, but I might try planting some of this in the front this week and see the other ones have sort of run out of energy or not quite sure what the deal is or maybe it's just been too hot it's been like 100 degrees quite a few days this week um so i might try growing some more of these because i really love squash and i feel like i haven't gotten the harvest that i would like to this year um i haven't been plagued by the same pests that a lot of people have but uh yeah it's not been fun well no that's not true it's been fun it's just not been enough and the last thing is i'm really debating between planting beets or radishes and the reason I can't do both is because I have I've realized that these two types of plants really need to have um, 
they really need a decent amount of sun and that front yard really is full of tomatoes and other plants right now so I think I'm gonna plant either the beets or radishes where I'm gonna pull up the cabbage I have two cabbage plants that take up probably two or three feet of space together um, where I can probably fit a couple of sets of beets or a good couple of rows of radishes I really want to have radishes from the garden I had a little bit in the spring but just not enough so tell me what you think if you like this video please hit that button and if you aren't already a subscriber please do tell me what you think what are some things you're planning on doing for fall garden if you have any plans at all and what are your suggestions for keeping the squirrels out of my food see you next time